Welcome back to the greenhouse and if you're new here, welcome aboard. We appreciate everybody checking out these videos and we are inspired to do more and create more just simply by you guys liking and finding interest in this. So you guys make this possible and thank you for checking this stuff out. Now today we are going to be setting up our little solar powered systems. We've got pumps and fans, all types of good stuff that we're going to be using to put all of that compost heat to work in our greenhouse. Now, it's been maybe 12 hours since we dumped that. We're out here the very next morning. We dumped it yesterday afternoon. So we're gonna go check out our temps. We've got all the rain that we could ever want to soak that compost in. So those wood chips take a ton and ton of water. We soaked it all day yesterday during the whole build process. And I put gallons and gallons of water on them wood chips because they will just soak it right up. So let's get right into all of our solar powered systems. Now, if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps us out a ton. Let's get right into this. So first things first, we've got some banana bread in the oven. Can't really see much, but we're gonna check that out in a few minutes here. And the next thing, order of operations here, is to move our DIY sifter. Man, we're gonna make a bunch of bricks and cool stuff this winter out of free recycled soils and stuff, so stay tuned for all that. That's what we use these sifters for, is to separate mediums and compost, all types of stuff. So we've got our return PEX line. I'm just gonna shove out of the way real quick. We gotta get this tarp off of our overflow tank here. A little water on it, a little bit of algae, but for the most part, that water's clean. I see two little moths. We don't have all of the normal debris that we would have as we were working, had the door open, running lines and all of the wood chips and stuff leaves. We just tried to keep this as clean as possible with our pump's longevity in mind. With one simple scoop of the fishnet, I got a lot of that debris and junk out of there. So with our water cleaned up, we're basically ready to start attaching things. Now I got this free kit for a birthday present from Harbor Freight and I haven't used it yet and I have all of these perfect size little hose clamps for what I'm trying to do with our PEX tubing. Now we're going to take those little elbows. These were like a dollar fifty a piece so got four of them there. Not too much invested. These are going to be for connecting our PEX to PEX. So first things first we've got our pump here and I didn't realize that I bought this much flow so it's got 1100 gallons per hour 12 volts four meter overhead flow so three amps definitely pulls some energy but that breaks down to about 18 gallons per minute and that's not what we want but i am going to start with this pump here to flow because we do have a decent head lift we've got to lift this water up quite a bit and run it quite a distance. It's going through 200 feet of PEX. So I didn't know what pieces I would actually need. So I'm gonna use my 90 degree elbow. That rain's really picking up. So we're gonna put our 90 degree elbow in here, run it straight up, and then over to our pump. I'm gonna show this whole process here. I hate using the flathead screwdrivers on these little hose clamps. I couldn't find my nut driver that's that small though. Let's take a step back and look at what we're working with. So we've got our power lines for our pump. Our pump is coming out of the water and we've got this crossover PEX. We're gonna have some leftover PEX here, but we're basically going to be able to just cut both of these and hook them together and that's the next step here. So one little tip, if you don't have any pipe cutters, your old pruners work the same. These work darn well to cut through the PEX tubing here. Cut 
cuts through those things like butter. I'm glad I got one inline barbed fitting here because I wasn't sure if I would need it or not, so I got one. They were only a buck fifty, so I'm not out much. If I really didn't need it, I might have a leftover elbow or 90 degree, so that's not too bad. So what I was doing over here, I just have this little piece of wire hanger. I put a small piece of foam and then I pinched our lines or our wires down underneath that to protect them, keep them from falling in the water. So we've got our pump there all the way down at the bottom. At our first connection, we've got our second connection, which cost us $3. And then we've got our $20, $25 shark bite fitting down there now i could have just went with the same type of deal but the shark bite is super easy so you're paying for convenience on that and the maintenance this might leak before that shark bite does so right now we've got a fully fledged functioning system hopefully this 90 degree angle doesn't hinder flow too much but with 1100 gallons per hour and 18 ish gallons per minute I want to just see what we can do here, so let's go check out the heat. Oh, I got to protect the camera. Oh, the compost heater sitting about 85 there, just under 90, maybe over 85. So it's definitely warm. My son's out here with having a fire. So we're only about 40 degrees outside right now, and it is raining, and that rain is just ice cold on us. My son was out there having a fire, and he's got a tomato and a sharp knife. <laughs> so our water moving system is 100% completed all the way from our pump all the way through the compost and back through the greenhouse 200 foot of PEX this has to go through so I'm not even going to turn this on today I don't want to draw water from that pile what I want is for that barrel to heat up in the center to 140 150 160 degrees and then we will have a great thermal mass this has pretty good insulating properties so it does hold a little bit of heat still and dump back into this overflow most of it is transferred to the ground and air inside the greenhouse and what's left gets dumped back into the overflow tank to be recirculated through the system again so what is next for setting this system up for when we turn it on in a day or two is getting a fan set up. Now I ordered myself this new fan and I believe that I'm going to operate this one as opposed to the small one. I want to see how much heat I can actually put through here. So this is not the data collection video. We just built this yesterday. It's only about 86, 87 degrees. It was just below 90 there. That is on the outer side of the pile there. We should be able to transfer more heat faster through that aluminum Conducting in the transfer lines that we set up and the way that we're going to do it this year. Looking down at our air moving systems, we've got our exit, we've got our intake. Now, I just wrapped some wire around this and it's pretty darn solid. So, what I'm going to do is just generically set this up and drop the wire. say that this thing is forcefully launching hot air that's got to be at least 80 some degree air I can feel the heat coming off of that nice good flow so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off just because I don't want to put too much cool air flowing through those lines cooling down the pile I really want that pile to get up to temp and activate before we draw any heat off of it I believe our stuff is done Ooh, that's hot Oh man. So another successful day in the greenhouse. That banana bread is absolutely delicious. Cooking out of that little greenhouse stovetop oven is pretty darn easy. It's like throwing it in the oven at home. Get a nice warm fire. Check the thermometer. Throw your food in and you're good to go. So I think that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to set everything up. Everything is ready. All we have to do is push start, basically. Connect lines and turn powers on. So we're gonna be able to transfer heat through all of this water and all of this air. And we're building upon our systems by having a secondary water line that we're going to be able to run back and forth with our 
greenhouse pond here too so stay tuned for all the updates and all the heating experiments related to this and other things that we do in the greenhouse here so i'd like to thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys next time